Yo, what is up guys? We are back for another live in the OU tier today and today I'm bringing a really cool team kind of inspired by my UPA match from yesterday. This is a Mega Glalie team. It's a Mega Glalie hyper offense basically. Uh, utilizes, uh, like we said, Mega Glalie. Uh, a Leftovers, Nasty Plot Thunderous, Life Orb Starmie with Rapid Spin to support uh, obviously the three Stealth Rock Week Pokemon that we have on the team. The only defensive Pokemon being our uh, Ferrothorn, still packing Gyro Ball and Power Whip. We have Banded, Victini, and Scarf Terrakion, which can clean up games really easily. So it's a really cool team. I uh, had a couple of test games with it, so we'll try to get a, a game really quickly here. Uh, it seems to work decently well. I think there are a couple of flaws. Uh, but Mega Glalie just in itself, because of the fact that it has priority, it has n a nuke in Explosion. Uh, Double Edge itself is, is also a nuke because it's refrigerate boosted, so it's extremely powerful. I think it goes up to base 150 or something like that. We'll check that out later. But like just looking at my opponent team, he gets at my opponent's team, he absolutely gets demolished by Mega Glalie. Uh, the Slowbro, the Slow King does not want to take a hit. The Tangrowth dies. The Landorus dies. I, we, we're packing Earthquake for the Heatran. Uh, we have... Uh, obviously, we don't necessarily need Earthquake, but it's nice to lure in Heatran. Kind of like my Mega Venusaur team, where I had Earthquake on that. Uh, and uh, the only thing that really takes a hit, a hit decently well is his Keldeo. So, we're not packing the Freeze Dry. We're uh, rocking Triple Ice move in Double Edge, Ice Shard, Explosion as the nuke, and Earthquake to handle Heatran. And uh, in this game, I think I just want to... I'm actually packing Rocks on Terrakion. So I think I'm going to lead with Terrakion here, uh, kind of not expecting the Tangrowth lead to be honest, but it's not the worst lead for us. Uh, I could just Poison Jab and get off a little bit of damage, but I don't think that's the best move. I think Victini might be our number one play here, and that's exactly what I'm going to do because then I can get off a Banded V-Create. He does have the Heatran, so I'm definitely going to consider just you turning out and leaving it at that, but... We'll see play by play here. Let's see what my opponent decides to do. Does seem to stay in, and he goes for a sleep powder, so that puts our Victini to sleep, unfortunately. But I can just go for a U turn and see what he wants to do. He's going to go for the knockoff. It's going to do a little bit of damage. He's going to get rid of our band, which is actually not necessarily a bad thing because I'm going to be able to switch up moves on the Heatran. And I'm probably just going to V create right here. Hoping I get a first turn wake in that he stays in, but he actually chooses to switch out into his Landorus, which is a good play on his part. I'm not going to play around with this. I do want to keep my Victini, and I have a perfectly good switch in Ferrothorn. If he wants to get up his rocks, that's fine. We do have the Starmie. He goes for the U-turn, so he's going to take the Iron Barb's damage right there. We still don't know what set he is. I could calc that, actually. Did 14% to our standard Ferrothorn set. Uh, OU Utility versus Landorus without the drop without a drop in general landis t uh, landis t defensive let's see how much u-turn does yeah so it's a defensive landis uh, he brings in his heatran so i'm gonna go directly into starmie here hoping we doesn't we don't get magma stormed as we do unfortunately but uh we are offensive so i could just fire off a pump here and it should be doing a lot to pretty much anything other than the tangrowth so alternatively i could also psychic um yeah i think my play is just pump and knock out his Heatran. So <laughs> there goes that thing. And we don't have to worry about that thing uh, switching in on V-Creates anymore. So we can pretty much freely fire off V-Creates. The only thing I'm worried about is his Landorus having a Rocky Helmet. So uh, I'm going to take that into account. Um, let's see. Ferrothorn does a little more work now. Definitely. I can pretty comfortably switch it in on this thing. Uh, I know Thunderbolt doesn't take this out because it's more specially defensive than it is physically. He could also be running Fire Blast specifically for, for Ferrothorn. So I don't know if this is the best move, but he has a Keldeo and a Heatran, so maybe not. Let's just go into Ferrothorn, see what happens. As he goes for the Psychic, that's not going to do much at all. And uh, we're going to be able to get up a layer of spikes here, which is actually extremely important. Hopefully he's not, uh, obviously, as we said, uh, the fire type move. I don't know why I'm not min speed on this thing. I'm packing Gyro Ball. I should be min speed. Um, that should be by default when Gyro Ball enters the set, but anyway, we'll just uh, fix that up. He is actually Fire Blast. He's going to be able to knock us out there, unfortunately. But now we can go into our Thunderous and immediately threaten this thing out. Oh, I kind of want to... I'm expecting his Keldeo to be Scarfed. That's the thing. Um, I want to go for Nasty Plot right here. As he switches out in Cl uh, Clefable, that's fine. I'm going to test if this thing is... 
uh, unaware. It doesn't seem to be. It's going to take that hit not too well, 66%. And we should be able to knock it out with the next one, as we do. I don't think the crit mattered because the first hit did 66, so second hit should be doing about 42, uh, 41, 42, so... Definitely don't think that mattered. His tang growth comes in. I expect this thing to be AV. I just want to calc to see how much Thunderous actually does to it. Nasty plot in Power Ice is on this set, right? Yeah. And we'll go to plus two against a tang growth. Um, are you a salt vest? For example, HP Ice still does 72 to 85. And I really want to weaken this thing. So I'm just going to HP Ice it. And we're going to knock it out so it wasn't AV after all. Uh, I think if his Keldeo is scarfed right here, he's pretty much forced into it. Thunderous is pretty much our uh, our backup win check when uh, Thunder when um, excuse me Terrakion can't do the job against a team like this. Obviously, Terrakion has way too many checks between uh, uh, Landorus and Slow King, Clefable, and he chooses to forfeit right there. As you can see, Thunderous was too overpowering. I really like Nasty Plot Thunderous. I love what it can do to teams. And uh, he just had no answer for it because I guess his Keldeo was actually Specs and not Scarf. So pretty good right there. Uh, and we already we had already tested for the damage from Landorus for the U-turn on our Ferrothorn. We saw that it was a defensive Landorus, so HP Ice would have knocked it out at plus two. And uh, this guy's got a another team that's extremely weak to Thunderous, like very weak. It's crazy. Uh, the only thing we have to watch out for is the Bisharp, which is uh, very very threatening. Um, that's definitely tank chomp. He wouldn't be running offensive chomp on a team like this because then he literally has no V create switch ins. So, keeping that in mind, I guess that could be scarf zone if it's scarf. I'm not packing protect on this set. I kind of wish I was right about now, but I think Glalie is actually a really good lead here because we can get off a lot of damage on something. Yeah, I'm going to lead with Glalie. And he chooses to lead with Bisharp, so not the best lead for us, but not the worst. I'm definitely not staying in. I'm just going to go into Pharaoh here. I very much doubt he'd pursued on turn one. I could see an Iron Head coming through. And him just, uh, he actually chooses to go for Low Kick, which doesn't do much at all to our Ferrothorn. And now, I kind of really want to predict the Magnezone to come in here and just switch out into Terrakion. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. He goes into Tornadus, actually. And he doesn't know that we're Scarfed, so... Edge is just going to do a lot to anything. I really have no reason not to click it. I know it does about 30% to his Bisharp, which is good damage overall. I would want to I would want to hit him with that kind of damage. And I get to see uh, if he does U-turn out, then I get to see what kind Well, we're going to outspeed him, so we're not going to get to see what kind of set he is. Uh, I very much doubt he would stay in here. He could think we're banded, um, but he chooses to go into Garchomp. It's a good play. I miss Edge. Not a big deal. It wouldn't have done much anyway. And we can just go Glalie here. I fully expect this thing to be a stealth rock set and not offensive and now we can just fire off a double edge and we we actually weren't faster but i'm going to be able to get off a huge double edge as you can see right there that does a tremendous amount of damage and i'm just going to go right back out into Fairthorn because i fully expect him to sucker punch me he actually chooses to go for iron head even though he's slower actually he could be scarfed now that I'm looking at low kick and iron head and the fact that he just stayed in there and went for an iron head instead of a sucker, he's definitely scarfed. Uh, now he didn't go into Magna Zone last time, so I'm really tempted to just leech here and get it over with. Alternatively, I could also go for a spike and pretty much damage everything on his team barring his Magna Zone with that. And I think that's actually the best play. He chooses to go into Magna Zone here, so I could have leech seed and got a, a little more health back, but then my spike wouldn't have been up because HP fire just destroys my life. And uh, that's exactly what's about to happen right here. Obviously, he's not going to go for uh, an electric move or anything like that. He sees leftovers. He knows we're not Shed Shell. He's just going to be able to knock us out right here. Good thing is I can go into Starmie immediately after and just fire off a Hydro Pump. We have Thunderbolt for Azu on our set. So nothing wants to switch into a Hydro Pump. It's Life Orb, Analytic. As long as we hit, we're pretty much good. And he does let that... Uh, he does kill our ferrothorn right there we have to deal with rocks a little bit but i can go into starmie here and what i can do is actually choose to go for a spin if i want to and uh i think just hydro pumping overall is my better play uh he actually chooses to stay in and he was not choiced all right well we lost our starmie there and we might lose this game because of that he chose to not run choice magna zone so uh he goes into bisharp we already know that this, this thing is more than likely scarfed so we can go into our terrakion right here 
and I kind of want to get up rocks like really badly uh, at the same time I don't want to lose my Terrakion so I think I'm just gonna go for a CC here and try to knock this thing out even if he goes into Garchomp that's fine I mean I'll gladly lose something else <laughs> in the process I really wanted to get off that spin though because these rocks are gonna be a huge hindrance to our Glalie to Thunderous Thunderous has leftovers luckily, but even Victini, everything is just going to take a tremendous amount of damage. And uh, if I kill off his Bisharp here, then his Pinsir becomes a problem at that point. And we have to play around that, but I think we can figure that out. I think we live a plus two quick attack. Well, we definitely live it with uh, Terrakion, so I can switch out into Victini. He goes into Tornadus here, so... I pretty much have to sack something off to this. Uh, you could have the superpower. I fully expect him to go to for, for a hurricane, though. Uh, realistically, I think that's his best play. Do I need Victini? Now that I know his Magnazone's not scarfed, uh, I, I really want a close combat here. I'm just going to get off a little bit of damage on this thing just to see what it wants to go for. As he goes for a knockoff, and he actually gives us the justified boost. So we're going to be able to knock him out on the next round, except that now we're not faster. We have to keep that in mind. So he can definitely hit us up with a hurricane and just knock us out. Knowing that, and uh, even if we're not Scarfed though, we still outspeed the Pinsir. So Terrakion can still put in a lot of work. I'm not going to let it go down here. I'm just going to switch into Victini on this thing and wait to see what he does. He goes for Acro actually. That's a cool play. And uh, he pretty much knows that we're not Scarfed at this point. But now I can go into Glalie. And without his Bisharp around, this thing actually does a lot to his team. We're going to Ice Shard right here. And uh, we don't knock out the Tornadoes, unfortunately. And he does have the Superpower. He's not Life Orb either, so he's not going to get knocked out from that. But we can go into Thunderous now. And I, I think this game is pretty much lost unless Thunderous can pull it back. Uh, which is very unlikely. He goes for the knockoff, especially that we lost our leftovers right there. I think we need to land a Focus Blast on this Magnazone and hope it kills at this point. Like, that's literally the only way, as it does not, unfortunately, uh, as he goes for Thunderbolt. And Terrakion not being Scarfed might save us. Uh, it may or may not. I'm going to go for Close Combat right here. Um, I think Garchomp just finishes us off, or Azumarill too, yeah, that works. I'm gonna go for Poison Jab, he's gonna go for Aqua Jet and knock us out, so that's gonna be a loss on that game, unfortunately. We missed the Hydro Pump with the Starmie, which would have pretty much taken care of the Magnezone. It would have done a lot of damage, I don't know if it would have actually taken it out, but it wouldn't have been able to come back in on a spike, that's for sure, so. Uh, that's very unfortunate, and, uh, we move on to the next game. I'm, I mean, it happens, it's Pokemon, you gotta get used to it. It happened to me in the, in the UPA twice, I got crit both weeks and and my pokemon that was supposed to win me the game just got knocked out so uh now we got a mega metagross team hmm okay all right well uh victini definitely puts in a lot of work once the garchomp is weakened and the the uh rotom as well so i kind of feel like just leading off with victini in this game to be perfectly honest i think um i think that's my best play I don't have a lot of answers for Rotom, actually, now looking at the team. I didn't think about that, but Thunderous handles it pretty well. I think we need to rely on Thunderous the most this game. Uh, once again, we need to keep it healthy. We need to make sure rocks are off, and we need to get off a nasty plot on probably the Togekiss, I would say. So we need to weaken the Metagross just a tad, and the uh, Latios needs to come down to about 80%, I believe because we're not life orb. Let me actually ca calculate that really quickly. We're still plus two right now. You guys will see it. It is about 80, I think. HP ice, uh, 78 to 92. So yeah, we need to get it to about 80%. Chooses to lead with his Togekiss. That's fine. I'm just going to click V create here because I want to get off. <laughs> all right, well, goodbye Togekiss. <laughs> wow, all right. Uh, Banded Victini coming through right there. As you can see, this thing is an absolute nuke. Uh, it does so much damage. Uh, that's a, that's a base 180 move, man. That that move shouldn't exist, especially in league play. Drew, this is going out to you if you're watching this. Like, get rid of Victini, man. It's too good. <laughs> so he chooses to go into Metagross. Obviously, Metagross can knock me out with an Earthquake, but unless it's got Hammer Arm, I don't think it can touch our Ferrothorn. So we're pretty safe to go into that. And uh, he's just gonna go for Quake. That's gonna do absolutely nothing. We're just gonna Leech right here. We lose nothing by Leech Seeding. 
and uh, then we'll make the appropriate switch afterwards. I really like Ferrothorn uh, as the core defensive Pokemon of this team. I think it, it backbones everything really well, and uh, it's showing it right now. Uh, obviously, this Metagross can have the Hammer Arm, but if it goes for Hammer Arm, it's not going to knock, knock us out. That's first. Secondly, uh, I might sound stupid uh, by saying that, but uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't knock us out from this range. And we're going to be able to get off a Leech Seed. He's pretty much going to be forced to Hammer Arm again on the following turn. We can bring back in Victini or bring in something that... Uh, that actually threatens out his Metagross such as Thunderous and then just fire off a Thunderbolt or a Hidden Power Ice in consequence So definitely just going for the Leech Seed right here gonna heal off a little bit and uh, once again I just need to keep rocks off the field So if his Garchomp comes in which it does as you can see I might just go directly into my Thunderous and Then again, this thing could be Scarfed So is Spikes a good play? Well, he has three things off the ground, so it's not the best play I don't want to switch in Gla Glalie on a potential Fire Blast, that's a very bad play. Uh, I think our best course of action right here is actually to go directly into Starmie, as even if I take an EQ, I can definitely live it unless it's a very offensive uh, Garchomp, and uh, then we'll be able to Hydro Pump him or Spin as a result. And the Leech Seed will always keep us alive, so we will always be able to Spin against his Garchomp. So, chooses to go for the Stealth Rock right there. Now, I'm faced with a pretty tough decision right here. I can either pump or I can rapid spin. And I think the best play is pump, honestly. I think it's just overall the best play. If he brings in his Rotom, then I'll spin. Uh, or I'll switch out into Ferrothorn, depending on what I think is the better play. And, uh, I mean, F Rotom doesn't take uh, Hydro Pump into Psychic too well. So, uh, I actually want to calc that really quickly. How much does Starmie with a life orb due to uh rotom wash where are you rotom wash oh you physically defensive pivot psychic does 50 to 59 percent so he actually chooses to go for dragon tail it's going to do a lot to our starmie but this is good actually this is great because i think i'm pretty sure we live on earthquake from this garchomp and we'll be able to get up our stealth rocks so that if he wants to switch out he goes down afterwards and uh, I'll just be able to get rid of this thing. And I'm gonna get up my rocks specifically for the Talon Flame. Weakens the Rotom for our um, for our Thunderous. It weakens the Latios and puts it in range of the plus two HP Ice, which we mentioned before. I'm losing things that I can kind of set up on with my Thunderous, but I think Talon Flame is actually one of those of those good Pokemon that you can set up on. So. Um, Starmie can still spin on his Latios and on his Metagross very easily, and his Rotom, really. I mean, there's nothing that really wants to, uh, there's nothing that outspeeds my Starmie, barring his Talonflame, his Brave Bird, so he's actually going to miss a Dragon Tail right there. A little unfortunate for him, we were able to get up rocks, and now he doesn't really know what kind of set I am, because I just went for Stealth Rocks and we are Choice Cards, so this is a really, really wacky, gimmicky set, I guess you could say. It's not optimal. I could be running Stealth Rocks on my uh, on my Ferrothorn instead, but I think Spikes are really, really broken uh, in this metagame right now. I think they hit way too many things if your opponent has a grounded team, and uh, it just it just weakens teams to the point where like they can't recover. And uh, Stealth Rocks plus Spikes is insane. It's 24% on neutral uh, for Rocks, and then it's even more on things that take quad effective from uh, from Rocks that aren't off the ground, like for example Fire types. Uh, like in, I guess Darmanitan is an example, but that's not really in the OU tier. But yeah, that's um, that's why I'm, rock I'm rocking rocks on Terrakion. Terrible pun, um, but uh, I think it's it's pretty good because you're guaranteed your rocks up. Your Choice Scarf Terrakion, there's not much that outspeeds you. I guess like Sandrush, Excadrill, you speed tie with Choice Scarf, Keldeo. So he brings in his Rotom right here. Uh, his Rotom can burn me. Uh, I can also go for a Volt Switch. I think Ferrothorn's done its job to the point where I don't mind if it gets burned. And if he does go for the will o -Wisp, he actually chooses to go for the Pain Split right there, which is great for us. Because now I can get up a Spike right here. And uh, that'll hit the Metagross. Actually, that's not... Again, he has three things off the ground. I'm just going to go for Leech Seed. Honestly, I think that's the best course of action. Once again... If he brings in his Talonflame, we're going to be getting Residual off of that. Uh, we can Gyro Ball it. We can choose to switch out into our Choice Scarf Terrakion. 
to threaten it immediately. He actually misses Will-O-Wisp, which is pretty bad for him. And uh, now I can just go for a Power Whip right here. And Rotom should be in range of plus two Thunderbolt now. Uh, it's also in, in range of two Psychics. He's gonna power. He's going to uh, Will-O-Wisp us. We're gonna be able to get off a huge Power Whip right there. He's also gonna be able to uh, Pain Split up right here, but it's not gonna matter because I'm just gonna go for another Whip. And at that point, he's gonna be so weak that uh, as long as uh, granting we connect, of course. Uh, he's going to be so weak that he can't really take any hit from anything on my team. Maybe Glalie, that's about it. But everything else is going to be able to Oko it. So, uh, really, uh, really unfortunate for him that he missed uh, the first Will-O-Wisp. I think it would have definitely been in his favor. Now he has to deal with coming in with a 17% Rotom, which, again, pretty much anything on my team kills at this point. Uh, he goes into Talonflame. Good play. He's going to quad resist that. It's going to do absolutely nothing. We do see that his Talonflame does not have leftovers, so it could be the Acro set. Uh, I don't really want to play around with this thing. I'm just going to go into my Terrakion. If he is Choice Banded, that means he's going to take a lot of recoil, and he's going to have to get the rocks out of the way before he wants to bring back in his talent flame and if it is banded that means that it doesn't get any kind of recovery it won't have roost on it so we're pretty safe there uh, again his rotom is is so weak to the point that anything on my team can take it out as long as i don't lock my terrakion into stealth rocks so we're pretty good i think we should be good to win this game i don't want to speak too soon but it's looking quite good um, the only issue is his Metagross right now, especially if it's packing Bullet Punch, just because I don't think Starmie Oko's it, and if he gets like a crit bullet on Starmie because it's not defensive, I think he could take us out. Other than that, I don't see a way that I could lose this game. And we still have the Choice Scarf on Terrakion as well, so we can just close combat that thing into a Thunderbolt from our Thunderous, and we should be good to go. He's taking quite a while to make his move. I'm assuming he's going to end up uh, disconnecting or forfeiting or whatever happens when you time out. I guess you could call it a timeout, so we should be able to pick up this game. I would have liked to finish it off and show you guys... Uh, the rest of what Thunderous can do to a team, but it looks like he's going to uh, not make his move right here. So um, Just in case he doesn't I'd just like to thank you guys uh, again for watching. Thank you so much uh, You guys have been a huge support. Never mind. I'll say that later <laughs> All right, so he goes for the flare blitz with his talent flame and he takes a bunch of residual damage and Now I'm pretty safe to go for a close combat because if he roosts then I it's not a resisted hit anymore if he goes into Metagross or Rotom, then I hit them both. And if he goes into Latios, he's not going to appreciate it either. So close combat is just pretty much my safest all-around play. And the great part is that Terrakion is still here, and it is still my Stealth Rocker. So he's going to forfeit right there. So coming back to what I was saying, thank you guys again so much. You guys have been a huge support. Thank you for watching these videos. If you enjoy, hit that like button down below. Uh, if you want to subscribe and, and see more of these, see more lives, um, hit that... Uh, hit subscribe. I think I already said that, but anyway, um, leave a comment down below and let me, uh, guys, let me know if, uh, one, if you want to join me on any one of these lives at any time, I do need a little bit of a better PC before I can do it, but let me know ahead of time. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, which is in the description as well. That's a good place to reach me. I pretty much get notifications on my phone for everything. So, uh, also let me know if you want to see more OU lives, because I know, uh, this Saturday we didn't have an OU live, uh, that just passed and uh, I know I'm only doing like one to two a week But maybe you guys want to see more OU I haven't really looked at the statistics on views on my videos and, and view time to see if they get more views I think they relatively do but uh, Anyway, let me know if you want to see more of those and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thanks again for watching Thank you so much and uh, ciao